Hello, welcome back. I'm Noreen Burke, owner of Call Clutter Fairy Home Organizing, and this is my YouTube channel, The Crafty Organizer. I have loved seeing all of the pictures and photos that you're sending me of your spaces, and there's a couple of things that I've noticed that you're struggling with. One of them is an upcoming video, which is behind me, so make sure you're subscribed so you get information on that one. But the other is how to handle miscellaneous drawers. So I had done a video a while back on how to make custom DIY dividers, but we're gonna go over that again today, and I'm gonna show you step by step how I lay things out so that you can have a customized divider so nothing gets lost and everything stays organized. So let's go. I had a wonderful day with one of my own Clutter Fairy clients and she has these two drawers. She had already bought a lot of the dividers to keep it organized, but I was dying to show you guys how to make these custom DIY inserts and she was gracious enough to allow me to go into her home and show you with these big beautiful drawers. And the video was going so well. And then my camera started glitching. I don't know why. So I had to leave her home, go home, try and download everything to make sure that I had space on my phone and I rushed back. Finished filming everything and then when I got home to start editing I realized that all of the footage from the first half of filming was corrupted. I don't know why. I don't know why. But this is teaching me to be flexible and go with plan B. So that's what we're doing. So what you're seeing is the second half of the footage. And I'm so, so sorry for losing the first half. It's frustrating to me. But if you're interested on the specifics of how to make one of these inserts, here's the timestamp so you can fast forward to that. But this is how I break down the actual placement. So you're going to see me pointing a lot because I'm talking, <laughs> but it's all lost. <laughs> so here we go. I have multiple strips of foam core cut, and we're going to start off by making small sections. So these strips are two inches deep, which is about the right depth. And I'm just going to start placing in the items that they will be using. Now, when there's a lot of little smalls, I like keeping those in an individual box. So you could either build that yourself or I'm going to go ahead and have the three that she had interlocking. But column by column, I'm going to start adding in the things that she has in this drawer and lay it out. So I'm going to go ahead and add her little alligator clips in this section. And then I'm going to build the next. She has these little travel cases that she likes to grab. So I'm making a home for those. So I set in the divider and now I'm going for the next sized item. So as you can see I've got narrows in one column and in this next column I'm going with wider items. So now I can add in all of her large clips and hair barrettes. So that section will just be for the large items. Then I can take my next column and start working for the very large items. So they had some medical items in here that were not going to collapse down. So as you can see, this third column is very wide, but I can still utilize that space with some narrow cross sections for small things. So I'm pretty happy with the overall layout of this, but I'm just going to go ahead and make sure. So I glue only the sections that I know I like. So at the end of the video, when I do the tutorial, I show you how to piece this together, but that's what I've done here. I've glued all of my pieces together to the bottom, and now I'm adding the final bottom section so that I can build out this last small side. So I'm placing in the large item that they don't use very often. That's good to keep at a back. And I'm not happy with these rollers, so I'm going to go ahead and move those over to the side because they're a little bit longer and it's causing that column to be a little bit askew. So I'm going to put them on the side and instead I'm going to have the batteries over by the battery charger and that gives me a different place for the pens and business cards and miscellaneous things towards the front. So now that I know the size of what those batteries take in relation to the lint rollers, I can go ahead and glue in my divider for this piece. 
This really is a simple project. The difficulty is laying things out so that the same similar sizes are within columns. Now, if you ever have a lot of smalls that you have to dig into, in that particular section, you'll want your divider to be about an inch max so that you can really get your fingers in there and have access to it. But you guys, all in all, if I weren't filming, this entire project would have taken me less than an hour. Now I've got that final piece glued in. And when you see the assembly tutorial, this little tab that is right here will become important. This is a pull tab so she can pull this entire drawer out if she ever wants to clean it or have access to it. But here's the finished project and here's the drawer that you didn't get to see. That was her makeup drawer. That one was such a great description and I'm so sorry that it's gone. But as you can see, every item is easy to get into. Everything has a designated home. So when she pulls something out, it has an empty space and you can easily see where it belongs. But even with the drawer opening and closing, nothing moves around. Now when there are smalls, I have a bin that she can pull out, take to where she needs to use it, and then put it right back. I'm really happy with these. As you can see, they look perfectly customized, and I only used two sheets of foam core, so this project cost just $2. Now, I know some of you don't have access to foam core. You can get these online through Amazon, and then for those of you who are out of the country, I would just recommend either using fiberboard from a hardware store or using some cardboard and just cover it with any type of contact paper. Now here's where I'm explaining. If there's an area that you're going into that you absolutely need to dig into, make sure, and I'm showing you right here, that piece is shorter so that you have the ability to get your fingers in and get access to it. If it's tall, you'll call me and hate me because you won't be able to get your fingers into it. So just be mindful of that on areas where you're using smaller things and you need to get access into it. This is going to be a mini reenactment since I lost the footage for the entire first half where I broke this down. So I'm doing it all on mini scale, but you can still get the gist of how we do this. The first thing I want to go over is when you cut foam core, use a sharp knife. Make sure what you're using is either very sharp or I learned a tip where if you use a serrated steak knife, you get a good clean edge. But for this to have a nice finished look, you don't want a jagged edge. So sometimes if you don't have a sharp knife, your edges will look kind of jagged and raggedy and you don't want that. So get a nice clean blade or like I said, get a serrated steak knife. Um, but I know not everybody wants to sacrifice their steak knife for that. So make the cut, you push down, you poke it just a little and then drag the blade across. You don't have to push all the way through. The nice thing with this is most of the time it'll snap open, but if it doesn't and you wanna make sure that that stays clean, when you cut the foam core, fold it in half and then you're gonna bring your blade on the inside of the fold and just drag it down and that will give you a precision clean cut so that it looks perfect in your drawer. Now again, this is mini version. You're going to want to have a base if you have very small things because inevitably when you build this divider, things could slide underneath and then you'll call going, Noreen, that was a horrible idea. <laughs> So you'll want to have it attached to a base, but we build the partitions and the divider pieces first. So if this is what you're building around, you're going to want to have a divider and you're going to want to have sides to that divider. So this is basically the premise of building this. So this is what I want to build first, is the divider structure. So what I do is 
I make the tiniest mark with a pen inside of where I want the little divider. And again, this is just so I make sure that I glue it in the right spot. Your hot glue gun is one of the best tools for foam core. Just run a bead right along the side and then find your little mark that you made. I usually will set it flat on the surface again just to make sure that it's square. Hold it in place and it dries very quickly which is nice. And there's your first piece. It is surprisingly solid. I have made a lot of different pieces out of foam core and with the exception of high heat in my garage during the summertime where one was actually in the sun. I have not had any issues making these foam core pieces using just glue gun. But if you are worried about the longevity of it, you could use Gorilla Glue, which is an amazing bond in your glue gun. So now I'm using the second piece here. So it looks like an H right now. But in a drawer divider, you would now have a place for your little stamps right here. And now we could build the next little partition for this imaginary mock-up. So let's say I wanted to have a piece here because now I've got a screwdriver over here. So my screwdriver is going to live there. So I want a partition. I'm trying to use scraps here. I want a partition there so that my screwdriver always has a home. So once again, I'm just going to run a little bead of the hot glue across the edge here and then I'm just going to go ahead and put it into place. So this is more about the size of what's going in your drawer. So sometimes things are not going to be perfectly symmetrical and that's okay. This is definitely a custom design for your items in your drawer. So again, this is a mini mock-up. The things aren't even the right height, but I wanted to show you how to build it. So once your insert is done, that's when you can go ahead and glue it down to the base. Now, if this insert isn't touching the sides of the drawers, you will want to put another piece on the outside of a square so that things are contained here. But most of the times when I'm building these, they will be against the edge of a drawer. So the side of the drawer will already be but up against like this, and my insert is actually fitting up against the side. But if not, like I said, then go ahead and take some more pieces to build out that square so that it's contained. But now we're gonna go ahead and glue this imaginary drawer together. So I take the piece that is removable, I take my dividers that I just custom made, and this would be the same size as the bottom of your drawer. And this is where we just go ahead and run some beads across really quick. And if you have a very large insert, that's okay. I would do it in sections. And then you just go ahead and set it down. And that's your divider. Now here's a couple of extra things I do just to make sure that this is a really nice design. I love using my Duck brand shipping tape. And I do believe that this is one of the best brands out there. I use shipping tape for a lot of different things, not just boxing up boxes. But the Duck brand is by far the best. And price-wise, I've gotten shipping tape from the Dollar Tree before. And if this has ever happened to you, you're going to start shaking your head going, Oh my gosh, yes. The tape will lose its end and stick to itself here. And now you're fishing through the entire thing trying to find the end of the tape. And when you finally find it and start to scratch at it to lift it up, it rips. That doesn't happen with the duct round, so that's why I like this one. So I'm going to pull out a long strip. So what I'm basically doing is I'm going to make a pull tab. And I don't even know if you could see the shipping tape here. But I'm going to leave about three or four inches of it sticky. And I'm taking the longest part of it and I'm folding it over on top of itself. So this is basically going to become a pull tab. So this has been folded over and this part is still sticky. I doubt that you could see that, but this part is not sticky. I folded it on top of itself and over here it is sticky. 
And wherever the head of my drawer is, I'm going to attach the sticky side on the bottom of my new divider. I'm going to take a small amount and apply more tape going across. And the reason I do this is let's say that this is your drawer. And I'm sorry everything is so opaque. <laughs> if this was your drawer and you built it in here, if it's snug against here and you want to clean it or you want to change things out, getting this divider out is going to be difficult. So by doing this very small, you won't even notice it, tab, you can always grab that tab and pull it out of the drawer. I think by far these DIY dividers are one of the easiest ways that you can customize a drawer or a bin. This doesn't have to be just drawers. If you have a big bin where you're organizing things, you can make many of these trays. And with foam core being inexpensive in most places, I know a lot of you don't have access to it outside of the US, and that's so frustrating because I know this would be a great tool for you. But you also can use cardboard with the same technique. So I hope this helps you get those spaces organized. Leave me a comment below on how you would use this for your space. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I do wanna quickly thank my Patreon supporters. These wonderful people are helping me to virtually organize so many of you at no cost. And I will be doing another sign up for that in October. But right now I'm working with about eight people and I'm really enjoying getting to know them helping them develop their space. And I can't wait to show you the before and afters of those clients. So make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss one of those videos. I'll see you guys in just a few days. Bye.